2021 was a rocky year for LEGO Star Wars, and in today's video, I'm going to rank all 25 sets from worst to first to find out what the best LEGO Star Wars set of 2021 was. You can comment your opinions in the comments section below. Now, there is a set that won't be on this list that was technically released in 2021 with the Skywalker Adventures pack, as all three sets within were released in 2020 already. So if you want to see my thoughts on those sets, you can check out Worst of First 2020 sets. Oh, and LEGO released a bunch of foil pack mini builds with their magazines overseas, not available in America, and much like Chicago Deep Dish Pizza, I don't think these are real LEGO sets. Anyway, let's hop right into it with the worst set of 2021. The UCS Republic Gunship. Boy, there is not much that went well for this set. I mean, this set got about as much negativity to surround it as any set I have ever seen. I cannot think of another set that has had a more poor release and reception from the LEGO Star Wars fandom and LEGO fandom as a whole than the UCS Republic gunship. I've probably made a half dozen videos at this point with just things that have continued to go wrong with this set. So I don't want to retread them here, but really what this set comes down to is yes, it's a beautiful build and really it does deserve to be higher, but all the baggage this set has drags it down deeper than the Marina Trench and I'm just not willing to put it any higher on the list. Our next set down on the list is the Resistance X-Wing, the lone 4 plus set for 2021 for LEGO Star Wars, and I am entirely convinced at this point that the only reason this set exists was to have a BB-8 minifigure available for $20 for kids to ask their parents for. The X-Wing is horrid, nobody cares about Poe Dameron at this point as the movies are over and he has no relevance in any relevant media, so I'm convinced that BB-8 is the reason this set exists. It is just a horrid one, though. And yes, please comment below and tell me how this set wasn't made for me. That doesn't make it good. LEGO Star Wars did a crossover with Alvin and the Chipmunks this year, releasing a Darth Vader completely missing the bottom part of the grill part for his mouth. Yeah, pretty questionable decision here with the sticker design to not include the full grill on the front of Darth Vader, making it look like he's got some real weird thing going on with his teeth at the front of his mouth. Darth Vader had to be made as a helmet set, but unfortunately it did not translate very well for a multitude of reasons. They definitely tried their best, but just because you tried your best doesn't mean you made a good LEGO set. For 70 bucks, this was more expensive than the other helmet sets that they've released to this point as well, meaning you're getting an uglier product for more money, which isn't ideal, and I'm just not a big fan of it. Yeah, Darth Vader helmet, it had to be done, but it wasn't done well. The Imperial Shuttle for 2021 did a couple things right, but it had one massive problem pertaining to its chin. Yeah, it had a massive black chin underneath, and it just didn't look very good, especially when compared to older Imperial Shuttle models. It definitely didn't have enough minifigs either. It really lacked any interior space, and thus they only included minifigs that could fit in the interior. So for 70 bucks, you end up with an Imperial Officer, Darth Vader, and Luke Skywalker. Skywalker, and I, I feel like sets like this should include like two stormtroopers. Like there just needs to be more in something like this for the money. I think slightly better than the full-size Imperial Shuttle is actually the Polybag Imperial Shuttle. This was a really good pickup for $5, no minifigs included or anything of the sort, but it makes for a fine looking small Imperial Shuttle to throw on your desk or on a shelf, and you don't need to put uh, 70 bucks into one that you might not love. Speaking of small sets, we have the Microfighter Millennium Falcon. Unfortunately, no counterpart Microfighter was released to this one. At the time of its release, it was the only Microfighter to ever release to not have another Microfighter available to oppose it. However, it did include a pretty decent Han Solo minifigure, and the Millennium Falcon looks good for a Microfighter Millennium Falcon. It's exactly what you would expect with stud shooters on top for your play feature. While I still Still think minifigs reign supreme for May the 4th. I can't deny that LEGO's May 4th 2021 set wasn't terrible like it was in 2020. It had a very nice micro build aesthetic with studs to represent characters seen next to the sand crawler, which was a really good micro sand crawler build and even had a printed element on the side of it to represent like the door and everything that's there. And then we had the Tatooine homestead off to the right, as well as a three piece Luke's Landspeeder, which actually somehow looks good. So while these May 4th promos would be better with minifigs, this one actually wasn't terrible. So 
props to Lego for doing that. For the first time, they did an Imperial Probe Droid in gray, which is the accurate color, and I think it turned out really well. I'm a pretty big fan of this set, although it definitely has some issues. It is the only buildable character to not include the minifig version of itself, which I was a bit disappointed by, and there are some issues with the arms of this thing not being able to be held up in positions that you would think they could be for, like, posability, as well as they just kind of fall off a lot on me, so I wasn't a big fan of that. I really love the extra snow that they added onto the display plaque, though. I thought that was fun and unique for this particular set, as well as its unique stand, where it actually uses the clear stilts, but it's built into a snow embankment to hold it up. It just looks really fun, and it's a really cool display set for Empire Strikes Back. Next on our list is a pretty good pair of micro fighters with the AT-AT versus Tauntaun micro fighter set. For 20 bucks, you got a great Luke Skywalker and AT-AT driver minifigure. I really love the Luke Skywalker, though. It was the first time that we've had the full face mask included underneath the helmet for him on Hoth. It just looks fantastic. The AT-AT build is what you would expect from a microfighter AT-AT build, far from perfectly accurate, but more than serviceable enough. And then the Tauntaun is just a chubby, fat version of a Tauntaun. The Bad Batch shuttle is up next, and this one is unfortunately just the wrong color. Lego went with a sand blue color scheme for it. Disney let them do it and I just don't see it. It's not light blue in the show. It definitely has some light blue paint underneath, but the majority of the color of the vehicle or the ship is definitely a dark gray. That being said, it is aesthetically pleasing to some, and for those of you, congratulations, but yeah, it's objectively inaccurate, and that's where I draw the line. All of that being said, the other big issue I had with this set was the fin. It doesn't actually lock onto the body, so when you would go to pick this up, unlike with the Imperial Shuttle where you could just pick it up by the fin and fly it around. If you want to pick this up, the whole top section of the shuttle would be picked up, but the rest of it would be left below, and then you'd just yank it along. It didn't work very well. The set saving grace are the two additional speeders, which looked excellent, as well as a couple of awesome stickers on the interior of the shuttle, which featured a Venator and the Invisible Hand. That was pretty cool to see. And then the five minifigs in this set. Getting all five members of the Bad Batch, bar Omega, I suppose, was awesome. Plus, Plus, you got a gonk droid. But yeah, I mean, the figures weren't the optimal design in some areas. I feel like the helmet for tech could have used the ability to move the visor up and down, but it's just completely locked in place. Like, there's definitely some improvements that could have been made there, but generally, these are pretty good minifigs, very detailed, full slate of printing on them, so you can't really knock them for a lack of detail. 2021 was the year of the downsize for LEGO Star Wars, and the TIE Fighter was a big part of that. 40 bucks for an Imperial TIE Fighter is a really good price, and for the price, this was a really good TIE Fighter. 432 pieces, you had three minifigs in the set, and the TIE Fighter actually turned out to be a really solid build. I still have a pretty big issue with them not releasing a light gray version of one of the hinge parts on the front of the TIE Fighter. Lego, only the best is good enough after all, but the rest of the build is really good looking, and generally, look, for 40 bucks, this is a dang good TIE Fighter. The armor is Mandalorian Forge is a nearly perfect set, and save for a couple of unfortunately cheap decisions by LEGO, this is an otherwise amazing kit. It's got so much going on for it. You've got the forge with the flames around the Beskar inside of a box. I was hoping the Beskar pieces in this set would better represent an actual Beskar piece, like it would have like a print on it with like an Imperial logo and stuff or something. They just use regular LEGO gunmetal colored ingot pieces, which is a fine representation, but not the peak of what it could have been. And then the other big flaw with this set is the armorer's helmet, which is objectively inaccurate. It looks really bad to me. And they literally just reused the helmet mold that they had just created for Gar Saxon to put it on the armorer. Yeah, it's better than not having an armorer minifigure, but man, for a company that touts only the best is good enough and that they never compromise on the quality of their products, it sure looks to me like they compromised on the quality of their products here. But the rest of the build is fantastic. I love all of the details around the room, and the Mandalorian and Paz Vizsla figures are also great to have in this particular set. So overall, it's a really good set, just with a couple of unfortunate flaws. Luke Skywalker's lightsaber was an excellent promo build for 2021. It came free with purchases of the UCS at which may be the only knock against it, given that you had to have $800 at the time of the set's release to both buy the UCS at 
and get this for quote unquote free, obviously, you know, it still costs you a lot of money. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. It adds to the Yoda's lightsaber from 2020 as the second lightsaber in the lightsaber collection, if you want to call it that. And I really love it. I just wish it wasn't locked behind that $800 paywall for people that can't afford it. Here we have the Duel on Mandalore, which is a set I kind of struggled with where to place on this list. It almost ended up pretty low. And to me, the biggest fault with this is the value you're getting for your money. The build is really small and they do not make up for that in the minifigure department. In my opinion, there should have been a third minifigure included in this set to go along with the Mandalorian vault that Darth Maul gets stuck in, and that should have been a shock trooper as you see here in the Clone Wars. The shock troopers guard the vault, and it would have been nice to have that to be able to recreate it with this particular scene. The actual Mandalorian throne, though, is in my opinion a really excellent build for such a cheap set, and you also have the ability to break the glass at the back and have them tumble out behind the throne. The figures in the set, Ahsoka and Darth Maul are extremely detailed and really great to get in such a cheap set, but unfortunately at the end of the day, I feel like this one just doesn't provide enough value for the money to end up any higher on the list. Here we have the Trouble on Tatooine set, a $30 set. It comes with an amazing build of the Tusken Raider crossbow, which has a spring-loaded shooter stuck right on the top of it, so you can actually shoot something at the Mandalorian on his speeder bike, and Grogu comes in a little pouch on the back of the speeder bike, it's so cute! And the other great thing about this set is that they actually gave us a Tusken Raider tent, a build I never would have thought we would see in LEGO Star Wars, but the Mandalorian has opened the door to many cool things, and a Tusken Raider tent is one of them. This was truly an amazing set, and its only shortcoming is the lack of Cobb Vanth and his speeder. For the first time, LEGO Star Wars had an advent calendar completely based off of one property, and that being the Mandalorian. As usual, there's probably a couple duds like weapon holders, but even the weapon holders in this particular set ended up being pretty decent as they basically replicated like a wall that you would see in a cantina or something like I, I think it ended up being pretty good there and then we also had a Christmas themed baby Yoda and Mandalorian I mean that's a great combo of Christmas themed characters as well as the Christmas themed pram and for the Tusken Raider like we saw in the Trouble on Tatooine set they included a micro version of the crossbow with a stud shooter on top really cool concept for an advent calendar all around and I hope in the future we get more like it Another downsize set for 2021 was Luke Skywalker's X-Wing Fighter. This one delivered though. It was a really solid build looking the part and it included four minifigs with RGD2 and Luke Skywalker, but Princess Leia and General Dodonna being the absolute highlights here. This X-Wing is truly great for the $50 and I think a lot of people loved being able to pick this up for so cheap. Next up for a display set, we have the Scout Trooper helmet. There are some people that don't like this one, but I am a huge fan of this. I think I think it's one of the better helmet sets that they've made. I think it's super accurate looking and I love it. It is also the cheapest helmet set that they've made coming in at just $50. So substantially cheaper than that 74 Darth Vader and in my opinion, substantially better looking. At seventh on the list, we have the Darth Vader Meditation Chamber. And this is a set that I love the concept for so much that it had to end up this high. It has just two minifigs, which is a bit disappointing, but it's really all that fit on the build plus like I mean it's just what's accurate to the scene I don't really know what else you would want it's a display set but the actual build for the meditation chamber is so fantastic you can drop the entire top part of the meditation chamber down so you can have Darth Vader doing his meditating within you've got a very detailed interior with stickers to show all the control panels and then you've got this really great TV screen, I suppose, showing a couple of other Imperial officers that are talking to Darth Vader at the time. It is so freaking cool. So while for $70, this may be a bit on the expensive side, I just think it's an awesome concept for an 18 plus adult set, and I really want to see more of it. Speaking of adult sets, we have the R2-D2 from 2021. This one was a great upgrade to the 2012 UCS version of R2-D2. It also included an exclusive 50th anniversary Lucasfilm brick that you could place R2-D2 on, it felt a little bit out of place, but I mean, I guess it's nice that it's included as this was the only set to receive anything for the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. It did have a really cool function where you could shoot Luke Skywalker's lightsaber out of the top of his head. You also had the camera that could pop out of the top of his head and it packs in a bunch of other functions and features. And as you would expect for a $200 R2-D2, it looks fantastic for display. Breaking our top five for 2022 somehow is the Slave one. This was a $50 set 
offset, another downsize from the previous model, but I think this was the best downsized model in 2022. It did a great job of retaining the look of Boba Fett's Slave 1 but this time in a much cheaper form factor. Perhaps the only true downgrade I would say for this model is that cockpit area, which is just putrid, where you have Boba Fett just sitting on studs at the top of the beam that runs up the middle of his ship. It's just not that pretty in there, and it doesn't rotate with the rest of the ship like it had on many previous models, so that's the real downside with this one to me, but everything else about it is great. It's super detailed for 50 bucks. You've got some stud shooters that fit right on the front. Love the cannons included. And then the killer feature to me with this one is that you get the display stand slash maintenance cart that works as both so it's great for play and for display which this set really needs to be as something that obviously a lot of older folks are going to want to buy but also maybe for kids to play with so it works great in both ways the biggest downside of the set by far is the unfortunately inaccurate boba fett minifigure lego refuses to make the helmet and chest plate the same color as they should be which would be proper to the movie but to me that's not enough to put this set any lower on the list because it's just too good. The Imperial Armored Marauder is an amazing set from the Mandalorian as well. It included a Grief Cargo minifigure, two Stormtroopers, but for me the highlight was the Artillery Stormtrooper. Getting a variant of a Stormtrooper doesn't happen all that often outside of Sand Troopers, so this was really great to see. Still would love a Flame Trooper from Season 1 of the Mandalorian, but hey, this was awesome too. And the build for this thing was fantastic. At just a $40 price point, it packed in so many features. Stud shooters on the front and back, you could have grief cargo pop out of the top you could fit a pilot into the front you can have a gunner in the back there's just a lot going on with this thing so huge fan of the imperial armored marauder and i think it's a great value for 40 dollars. i'm surprised they didn't try to get 50 for it third best set of 2021 for me was the mandalorian starfighter and it's not even because the starfighter is the greatest mandalorian starfighter ever it's because the minifigs they are like one of the best just cleanest looking slate of minifigs I have ever seen in a Lego Star Wars set. We've got Gar Saxon, Bo-Katan, and a Mandalorian Loyalist, and they are just decked out. The Mandalorian Loyalist, I desperately want in a cheaper set to amass an army of those guys for. It would be amazing. And the Gar Saxon had a unique helmet mold made for him that looks amazing with the horns on top. Not to mention the color scheme of him from Star Wars just translates so well to this Lego figure that bright yellowish orange color for his visor and then the red and gunmetal gray just oh it's a great mixture and then the bo -Katan figure if we don't talk about the hairpiece is really really good too super detailed i'm just such a big fan of the mandalorian figures in this set and all for just 60 bucks i mean again this is the type of thing just like the imperial armored marauder i'm surprised they didn't try to jack it up 10 more dollars because it feels like this is a type of set they'd charge 74 and to me the only downside of the mandalorian starfighter is the lack of landing gear or something to hold up the front of the ship when you have it in landed mode for display Otherwise, it is just amazing. Here we have the Imperial Light Cruiser, a set that to me only has one major downside, and that's that it didn't include two Dark Troopers. It only includes one. We also got a Moth Gideon minifigure, Fennec Shand, Cara Dune surprisingly made a return, the Mandalorian, and of course, the Child. A phenomenal figure slate for this particular set. It has a really cool feature where you can shoot the TIE Fighters out of the front of the Imperial Light Cruiser, just like you saw in the Mandalorian and those micro TIE Fighters, while micro do look pretty good for their size. You had tons of turrets on the side of the ship and two main cannons on top, which could rotate and shoot off spring-loaded shooters, which looked kind of ugly, but otherwise are fine. The bridge of the ship was well detailed, and then the bridge of the ship physically was represented for play within the body of the ship, and you had a ton of details in there. I do wish there was a better hologram, though. And instead of having a carrying handle that kind of pops out of the Imperial Light Cruiser, you could just use the top bridge of the set like just the very top of it to pick it up and swoosh it around so overall this was a really cool big ship to get for the summer lineup i love it i love the figures and i think it was done at a very fair price for 160 dollars so that is number two on the list and that brings us to the best set of 2021 for lego star wars and that is undeniably the ucs 
AT-AT with 6,785 pieces for $800. It is what a lot of people have been wishing for for well over a decade at this point. A big AT-AT was so long overdue and LEGO certainly did it justice, including nine minifigs with four snowtroopers, a snowtrooper commander, two AT-AT drivers, General Veers, and Luke Skywalker. The set also included an e-web cannon for your snowtroopers and two snowtrooper speeder bikes to have them fly around on around the at the display plaque hit a screwdriver behind it that allows you to turn the gears for the AT-AT's legs to change the posability of the model. Yeah, it's so big and heavy they had to completely design something special for the legs so that it could hold its own weight up. It's really well engineered, fantastic building experience, and an even better finished product. And not to mention the interior of this AT-AT is perhaps the most accurate interior on any LEGO Star Wars set we have ever had. Down to the colors of the chairs in sand blue, this thing is fantastically modeled inside and out. You can fit somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 snowtroopers inside of the thing, which is about how many it carries in the universe. You also have the perfect cockpit area for the AT-AT drivers and General Veers standing tall behind them. It was also fantastic to finally see them use red for the front face of the AT-AT. They hadn't really done that on any of the bigger models yet, so seeing that on this one was awesome. And not to mention, they allow you to pull off the panels on the side of the ATAT -AT completely, including the side of the head, to display the ATAT -AT like it's the cutaway version of the ATAT -AT from some of the Star Wars Visual Dictionary books. It's a top five LEGO Star Wars set all time, and for many, potentially number one. And certainly for 2021, for me, it was the best set of the year. So that is going to do it for my LEGO Star Wars Worst of First for all sets in 2021. You can let me know which ones you agree with and which ones you disagree with in the comments section below. If you knew the channel, please consider subscribing, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and you can check out more LEGO Worst to First videos on the end screen now.